friends. So today we are going to focus on some other chest moves because um, a lot of the basics to do with the hips, figure of eights, circles, myers in whichever direction. Um, but the torso is really important. Um, really important as well for the strength in your upper back. And belly dance is all about isolations. So today we're going to just have nice still hips and focus on our chest. Now I've already done a tutorial on chest raises. So today we're going to do start with a couple of simple things, chest slides, and we're going to do some chest circles, and we might even do some chest figure of eights. So because when you're working your chest, there's a tendency to start arching in the back because your, all your focus is here and you start arching. So try and keep soft knees and tail tucked. Hands on hips, I find, is easier to kind of get a bit of leverage. And we're going to start with the basic slide. So hands on hips, tailbone tucked, keep the abs pulled in. Um, by doing so, you're going to keep solid and stable because what you don't want to do is move your hips. So put your hands on your hips like you're pushing them down. Do not move. OK, and to get better chest isolation, if you lift your rib cage, you'll find it easier um, to get some movement. But as ever, what happens, you, get, you start with the tailbone tuck, you lift the chest and oh, look what happens. You get that arch. So you really have to be mindful of that. And standing against a wall is a really good way of doing it. Also, doing this seated is a very good way of doing it because you can't move your hips. So, standing front, tuck that tailbone, press your hands to the hip bones just to get a bit of chest raise. And we're just going to move the side of the ribs to one side and then side to the other. So it's like you're trying to move your chest into your elbow joint. So slide it across. As I said, the higher you can lift your rib cage to begin, the more freedom of movement you'll feel. Okay, so this is our basic chest slide. Now check that you're not going like this. It's handy if you've got a mirror because that's not a chest slide. So it doesn't matter if the only movement you're getting is a small one. Your technique is far more important. You should feel stretching down the sides. So really get that chest as high as you can and just move it side to side. Keep firm in the belly. Okay, now another temptation obviously is to have your shoulders here, which also makes it hard. So you need to pull those shoulders back and down. If it helps, you can put your hands more behind just to keep those shoulders down or keep them Egyptian style. So you're really pulling those shoulders out the ears. But if you find you need a little bit of leverage, just by gently pressing the fingertips to the, the hip bones, just to get that movement, then that's fine. When you feel confident that the slide is happening as you would like, as I said, it doesn't have to be a big noticeable one. It could be quite small. As long as you get the technique, that's the important thing. And then you can start adding a little bit of arms just to exaggerate, still trying to keep in a straight line. I would highly recommend practicing this in front of a mirror because often you think you're going in a straight line and then you realize your shoulders are dipping. It takes a bit of practice, but don't worry. Okay, so that's your chest slide. And it's quite important because it's the basis of all the chest circles that we do and shake it loose. Good. So. We're now going to move our chest in a different direction. Um, so on, on the chest raise video, just going to pull the shoulder, the, the chest up, but as ever, as ever, you're not arching. It's all tucked and you're just going to press upwards. So you press up and you crunch down, you press up and then you pull those abs in, up, crunch in the belly, up, crunch in the belly, up, crunch in the belly. When you do torso moves, it always involves abs, which is a good thing. So keep that tailbone tucked. We're going to put them together to make a square. We're going to make a square with our chest. So we're going to slide to one direction, 
Heave it up. Slide across. And then use your belly button to crunch it in. So we're going to slide all the way across. Push upwards. Slide all the way across. And then crunch. And as I said, if you practice this sitting, it really helps because it stops you moving your hips. And slide across. Press up. Slide across and crunch. Slide across, press up, slide across and crunch. And now we're going to do the same direction. We're going to smooth off the edges to make it a circle. So crunch it in, push it to the side, press it up, 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 bringing it over and then crunch it back in and across, push it up. Carry it over, crunch it in, across, pushing it up, across, crunch it in. And of course, we've got to change direction, across, pushing it up, across, crunch it in. So it's incredibly good for your posture muscles. Make sure you're keeping that tailbone tucked so that you're not arching in the back. I'm hearing some lovely clunks in my spine. So that is a basic chest circle. So we've had the slides. We've got a basic chest circle. And although I describe it as a basic chest circle, you might find it's not easy at all. And don't worry, because it's not, it's not. It takes a little bit of training and a bit of practice. So another one that we're going to do is um, a figure of eight with the torso. So there's two ways of doing this. So remember, we have our inside Maya, the vertical figure of eight. OK, so if you imagine that your shoulders are a mirror of your hip bones, what your hips can do to a certain degree, so can your shoulders. So as, as with the Maya, when you let your hip drop, Push up and out, up and out, down, up and out, down, up and out. That's what we can do with our, sh our shoulders. So pelvic tug and keep your arms nice and long and loose. So you've got freedom of movement. So pull one shoulder down, push it out and up and travel across. Other shoulder down, push this shoulder up and down and up. What we're trying not to do, and it's really hard not to, is to want to go like that into your ear. Really, although I'm talking about having um, the shoulder going up, it is, but really think about your rib cage. So if you push it from the rib cage, so push the rib cage up and down, rib cage up and down. As ever, if you're seated, it's much easier not to um, try and move the hips. So you're just, it's just an upper body. I say just, honestly, trying to do um, upper body moves until you're used to isolating those muscles and you've strengthened those posture muscles, it is really challenging. So whatever you're able to do, however small the movement, that is fine. Just be proud of that. OK, so that's your figure of eight. Um, and also when you're doing a hip figure of eight, what quite often happens is you put the shoulders one direction and the hips another. <laughs> that's another thing. Don't don't worry too much about that. So that's that kind of figure of eight. And of course, we have a horizontal figure of eight where you get that lovely swing back, twist through the hips with a lovely swing back. So we do a modified version with the, with the shoulders. So you twist the shoulder forward as you would the hip and then lean into it, let it swing you back, then shift the weight into the other shoulder and then just swing it back. And as with all the shoulder moves, it's really your rib cage that you're focusing on. So if you think of your sternum as your center, OK, and it's it's not doing that. Um, the shoulders aren't moving. They are like the hips. They're just along for the ride. So that's a kind of torso twisty figure 
of eight. And that, I feel, is enough to be getting on with. So well done if you managed even half of that.